Hey everyone and welcome to today's video. So we've got a bit of an install again. So we've got lots of how-tos coming. It's actually quite a good period in the channel because we're getting lots done for Mini in the Park. So we've got another one which is a P3 gauge. So for those that haven't heard of those before, basically um, a lot of modified car owners like to install sort of, whether it's a scan gauge, ultra gauge, some sort of gauge so they get to see temperatures, oil temperatures, intake temperatures, read. Um, engine management codes, all those sort of things. So there's lots of options on the market. The one I've chose to go for is the P3 for a particular reason. So for those that saw my previous F56, I actually had one of the P3 gauges in there. And there's a, some more videos on how to use it actually on the channel already. Now I actually sold that um, P3 gauge when I got rid of the car. Um, but someone i know actually purchased it um and we still talk um he's been ethan really helpful in terms of getting parts for the f56 so he works for the mini parts department so he's helped me out with lots of um, really good prices at uh, rybrook um stratford in terms of their parts department so big thumbs up ethan actually was so kind to actually when a load of the mini parts came across he actually included the P3 gauge and, and handed it back to me so that I could put it into this build. So a big thumbs up for Ethan for sending that through. Really appreciate it. Um, he did have a couple of issues with it, which I've managed to solve really easy. Um, so that's all up and working now. So I'm going to show you how to install it. It's really easy. Again, another DIY fix. So you do have to take a bit of the uh, center console apart. But after that, really easy. And I'll show you it afterwards. Okay, so t we need to remove this as a starting point. So to get this out, there are little push pins just below here. If I show you those, let me get hold of one. So we've got them here. And if you look, they've got a little push pin. So what you need is like a little um, Phillips screwdriver, a tiny little one, just to push that through. So those are located under there. There, one that side and one that side. So if you we go down now, see I've just removed those. So we just push that center of that pin in and they pull it out. Then up here, we need to get this plastic grill off now. Some cars with HK have a speaker under there, but again, this just lifts out. So what you need to do is get a plastic trim tool push it down underneath now mine was already lifted out so you might need a little bit of force to, and just work your way around maybe a couple of those to get that out and the reason why is it's quite difficult to show but here where my finger is there is a little clip basically it hooks on at the top of here and to release it you have to push a little screwdriver through that bit at the top okay so before you do that with the screwdriver you can pull this off now the first time you take this off it's really tricky but as long as you've undone those two little pegs you can put that out of the way so it stays safe and doesn't get damaged then like i said you need to up here push down like this and at the same time i've got the camera so it's a bit tricky but then pull outwards like this and you can see that's released that top clip then we have a couple of torque screws that need to come out. So if I come down here and show you, there's one here and there's one here. So I'm going to go get a screwdriver, a torque head, and I'll tell you what size, and get those removed. Now. Okay, so all we do, a T20, and there's two of them. We just take those out. So that's one. And what I do whenever I'm working on the dash is use the little ashtrays down here just to store cup holders. Just to store any screws that we remove. So let's take that one out as well. Now, this might feel scary that you're taking dash apart, but honestly, it is quite an easy, as long as you've got the right tools, so the T20 bit, for example. This actually is quite an easy job to do. Um, so those two screws are out next. You can see because we've released that clip and the clip I'm talking about is this here. It goes through this little hole at the back and that's why you're pushing your screwdriver down because you're pushing that and flexing that down so you can pull this forward. And you can see because we've got those two screws out, that is now 
your screen out. You okay, can... so now you've got the head unit out of the way, you can undo this screw here, which removes this vent. So that should be T20. Hopefully I've got one of those to hand. T10, T20. Let's get that out. Right, and just switch to fingers so I don't drop that down the back of the dash because it's nothing more annoying. And then this vent to just unclip like that. So you have to do a bit of force, but as you can see, it's just clipped in and screwed in with that one clip. It looks scary to get this off, but actually, it's nice and easy to get that head unit out. So let's go and get our replacement to her vent. So this is the P3 gauge, so comes from Orange I've installed if you order it that way. It depends which version you get. Mine was already pre-installed and it connects to the OBD port there. So what we're going to have to do is run this cable up through the back of the dash behind here, which is pretty simple to do, and get it coming out just up there. So let's do the wiring next. Okay, and show you just how easy it is to get the wiring down to here. So if we look there are the pedals, if we come up and look down in the dash, I don't know if you can see my fingers wiggling down there. That's my hand under, just above the pedals. So all we've got to do is pass the cable down there and go under the steering column, out through here, tuck down, because there's literally a little ridge up there that you can tuck down and into the back of here. So it's so super simple to run the cables on this. Okay, so you can see we've dropped that cable down and all we have to do is make sure we overlap the edge. We push it back into place so that this here lines up here if you look we sort of come in at this sort of angle we have to make sure this hooks on over the edge of this bit here so i'm going to do that with two hands and then show you the finished article okay so you can see we've got that pushed in so there's two little pins here and here on this bit of the dash that you push that into and you can see we've now got that ready to put our t20 back so i'm going to whack that t20 back in you can see our grill still works in terms of ability here, so that's good. Then when that powers up, that will display nicely. So then we just need to reverse the steps to put this screen back in. Okay, so you can see that's working now. So if you press the buttons, throttle, RP5 speed, 0-10, to 10, battery boost, coolant, oil, temperature. So at the moment with how hot it is, and because I've just Put the car together coolant is probably the most important so if we'll go all the way to coolant so that's 95 degrees okay so that was a super easy install so there's a couple of videos on the channel already on how to use the p3 gauge so i'll link those in the description below it's so useful for being able to view things like your intake temperatures temperatures etc so i'm going to flip the camera around now and just show you that on Okay, so if you see the, the little dial there, you obviously can see that it's 50 degrees C. And if we press the button on the right, we can flick through. So it's going to show me coolant temperature, 53 degrees. Oil temps, they're coming out at 38. Air inlet temps, 28 degrees. Ignition, and you can see you've got lots of different options. Now, I know one, some, one of the observations I've seen with people when they install the P3 gauge. So if you look from where I'm looking, it's quite difficult to see it hidden over there. Sometimes the steering wheel gets in the way, but I think if you get the angles right, and for me, it's just for a quick glance, I'm not always gonna be staring at it while I'm driving. I think it's really good because it integrates nicely. It's not like you've got a big dial stuck anywhere. And the fact it's mounted into that air vent for me is such a really nice touch. And you can see nice OEM finish, and it looks like it's meant to be there, especially the fact it's lit up orange, just like the lights on the dashboard as well. So that was a super easy install video so if you found that useful please hit that thumbs up button and hit the um, subscribe button and notification bell so you get alerts every time we upload content for the f56 thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video yeah.